We spend the next few weeks resting in the peaceful Aragua capital, gathering intelligence on our target and making preparations for our final mission. Since we feared that they might refuse to sign the Alliance Pact otherwise, we kept our plans a secret from the Council. As time passed on, the border skirmishes grew in number and intensity, and the far north denizens began to take the threat more seriously. The timing could not be more convenient, as the news of the Chaos Empire's hostile advances helped quell the humans' instinctive distrust of our kind. To think that there was once an era when elves were the custodians of the great continent rather than humans. Finally, the decisive day came, and the entire council gathered once more to decide our destiny. We have sent our declaration of war to the Chaos Outpost near Derval. I believe we already have troops stationed in Aran Valkyr, Agam and Aranitar, ready for combat. Also, the Dwarves of Valgran agreed to send us a few experts and supplies. Now that the pact is sealed, all that remains to be decided is the Elves' role in all of this. Well, about that. Galas explained his plan to the Grand Council. So, you intend to infiltrate the Empire's lands and assassinate their Emperor? Ah, you elves sure are full of surprises. I never expected such an audacious plan from your people. Lady of Light, I am inclined to suggest that you stay in the Northlands with us, where we may be able to make better use of your services. I would normally agree with that, but I am certain you and Lady Elana have also felt the dark presence that enshrouds the lands to the south of the Heart Mountains. Have you not? It is a power beyond our understanding, yes. We have consulted our best sorcerers about it over the years, and none of them have managed to descry the secrets it guards. The situation in this regard is quite reminiscent of the stories from over 300 years ago. And I believe this is the real reason you acceded to declare war on the Chaos Empire. Sooner or later, you will want us to investigate anyway. So why not allow us to do so now that the Empire and their demon allies will have their hands busy dealing with the Alliance forces? If you want to look at it another way, it also serves to keep a dangerous criminal away from the country. Points at Malkeshar. My only crime is not ripping out your throat when I have the chance. You do make a valid point. Very well then. We authorize you and the Lich Malkeshar to assist Lord Galas in infiltrating the Chaos Empire. Erathon will accompany you. Erathon? But he... <sighs> Fair enough. I see Galas is uh, as annoyed at having to babysit Erathon as I am. <laughs> I hope he'll level up soon. I don't think. Yes, Lord Tarankian. Oh, Mr. Mr. Lime there, sorry. Don't worry, Lord Gallas. I'm willing to risk my life if needed to ensure no harm comes to you or your advisors. They intend to keep watching us? Really? How paranoid can you be? I say we murder him in his sleep. And thus, the council has spoken. I cannot believe we just approved this. Well, well. This has certainly been an interesting and productive council for everyone. And I, for one, am looking forward to tearing those demons apart, now that we are done with the incessant chit-chat. I could not possibly enjoy massacring living creatures by the hundreds, no matter how evil they might be. But I can't say I will miss doing this diplomacy thing either. I have been through worse. Trust me. At least this time we didn't have to wait years for a decision to be made. Throughout Erdia's relatively short recorded history, elves seldom participated in wars. On the few occasions they did, the results were grim and devastating for everyone involved. The orc invasion following the humans' arrival, a civil war amongst our forefathers, a war against an empire led by a great necromancer, 
and the final doom of Wesmir under Jangor's rule. We had agreed that our sacrifice was necessary to keep the involvement of the elves in this new war to a minimum. Lord Inodian and Lady Unarie would see that our people would not be senselessly dispatched to the battlefield to die. Meanwhile, Elinia, Malkeshar and I would hopefully earn our people a swift victory by bringing down the orchestrator of our suffering, the brain behind the machine that is the Chaos Empire. I wondered if we would ever return to the northern country as victors, whether we would become stranded in enemy territory and die before accomplishing our mission, or be killed by the demons after vanquishing their leader. Even though the Araguaithi had gathered enough information on our target to guide us on our mission, there were still many questions left to answer. Most importantly, are we to believe that Uriah actually exists and is behind everything? Could Yechnagoth have survived the battle against our desert kin somehow? Did Anlinde manage to vanquish the warlord or was her sacrifice in vain? Could she be alive in a dungeon somewhere, tortured by our enemies? Or would she have taken her own life before? Scenario 16, Dawn of War. But there was one thing we did know for sure. This was the beginning of the end, the dawn of our war against the Empire of Chaos. Us three were at the center of the storm, and we would make sure the Empire and Uriah herself would feel the wrath of the peoples of Erdia. A cold gust of wind blows. Galas! Huh? Alright, mysterious mission here. Objective only, rendezvous with your allies, and I've only got five turns with which to do so. Run, Galas, run! Galas! Is anybody there? Only the darkness within your heart. The darkness and the fear. They feed me, Gala. I grow stronger with them. All right, jump into the water. You cannot escape the darkness within your heart, and thus you cannot escape us. And your friend, the sorceress, neither could she. And you will suffer the same fate as she if you refuse our generous offer. A large chaos battalion has set up camp near the mountains. It is paramount that we block their advance here. Charge! Sir, what are we going to do? Run across the battlefield with wild abandon? Well, our priority is to sneak past the enemy lines and make it to the mountain pass. We are not meant to actively participate in this battle, but helping our allies on our way to enemy territory would be highly beneficial to everyone. Let us see if we can. The followers of Uriah seem to have sent more battle-hardened troops this time. No matter. I trust that you two can handle it. Alright, so... Defeating all enemy leaders gives us an early finish bonus. Um, but the objective is to sneak past enemy lines with either Galas or Elinia or Malkishar. And if any of those three die, or if Erethan dies, or if we lose both ally leaders, we will lose the game. Uh, now there are only 26 turns, so we have to act pretty quickly in this campaign, in this scenario. Um, and there are some other important things to note. First of all, any veteran units that we don't recall during this scenario will be permanently lost. Um, you can only recall or recruit elves during the first gameplay turn. Um, so this is really quite important, right? Um, I've got basically six squares here. I can rec recruit um, six new elves, or I could recall my best six elven troops and hang on to them. 
anyone else that you don't recall during this scenario. Anyone at all that you don't recall, anyone I don't recall during the first turn is gone, elf-wise. Any veteran units that I don't recall during this scenario will be permanently lost. Um, so good thing I've got a fair amount of gold, because I'm going to need to do a lot of recalling in this scenario, starting with the elves. Whew. All right, let's get going. Malkeshar, as usual, your best, your best objective is to just run. Um, now, who've we got for enemies here? We've got a gut retro down here in the south. We've got a chaos razor man over here in the left. Um, we've got some random razor birds in the middle. Uh, we have an overlord called Ben in the middle of the map. I don't know why that cracks me up so much. It's such a normal name, I think. Ben, Ben the Overlord. Um, and we've got a, a Chaos Law Keeper over here, Karen Ilyani. And these are the enemies that we have to defeat. If we want to get the uh, early finish bonus, if we don't want the early finish bonus, it doesn't matter. We just have to win the scenario. But since I'm going to be recalling all my best troops, I think the best plan does seem to be to just recall as many units as possible and hope that we can just smash the enemy forces. So we're going to try that. Okay, so elves. I need my elves. So who am I going to have? Elvish Prowler Detea. He's the obvious choice, right? He's almost at another level and he's just, you know, these Prowlers are very useful. Um, they're winning the Enchantress. Again, only Enchantress I've got. Revelia the Sharpshooter. Um, sharpshooter with the special explosive arrow attack that I haven't used yet, actually. Um, Sothinia is my main healer. She's already had an after maximum level advancement. She's on the line, on the way for another one. Um, so these four are really fixed choices. Um, Felor is the Berserk Elvish Marshal. Um, and I've just accidentally recalled him, but that's fine because I was going to do so anyway. Um, so basically I've got one of the choice. It's Quothad, Naife, Pathian, Sithad. Um, now, Sithad, I believe, also, he has the Poison Bow. Um, so having an Avenger might be handy. Um, I don't think any of these other troops are Avengers. Um, so if I want to keep it diverse, it seems like an Avenger might be a good choice for the, for the Poisoning. Um, but having another Shide, like Rothea, is also very tempting. Um, now, the idea here isn't that all of these troops that I don't recall will die. It's just that they won't... that they won't stay on um, by my side as I delve into the depths of the Chaos Empire. Um, and these Fire Fairies and Sprites, um, I don't know if I'll lose them to but probably, but I can recruit more sprites later in the campaign. The, the only thing I'm really sad about is that Vimir, the Elvish civilian, um, will not make it through, but that's fine, you know, that was um, kind of expected, really. All right, so let's just get to it. Now it's it's kind of obvious why I mean I think it's it's reasonable why they're they're trying to restrict why they're trying to restrict the list of um, why why they're trying to restrict the list of units like this um, ultimately um, you know it's it's quite important that you get, you're going to get so many powerful units in this campaign that it's 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 really not a surprise that uh, that it, they need they need to be weeded out a little bit but it's good still that we can keep some of the powerful units from the very beginning of the campaign and to uh, keep them going through because i've got the videos i'll be able to look back and uh, see exactly who has made it from which stage of the campaign uh, but for now it's goodbye to quothad naife um pithy and the elvish outrider um it's goodbye to rothea the shy it's goodbye to velia um so i'm losing a fair few level three units here um but Sithad, I think, who is the uh, intelligent, dexterous Elvish Avenger, um, is going to be more useful. I mean, I'm not sure this Poison Bow is not the most useful thing. An alternative would be to have a resilient Avenger, who's got seven more hit points. But I'm going to go with Sithad, who can poison. 
Okay, that's it. That's my elves. That's it for them. Everyone else is gone. Shed a tear. Alright, you run and get some houses. Now, Erethan has said he's willing to lay down his life for me, but um, he's not actually yet willing to lay down his life for me, because if he dies, I lose the scenario. Can you get any villagers next turn? Only the allies' villagers. That's a shame. Alright, you press forward and support Malkashar. Same with you. Okay, we've got level 1 orcs, we've got level 1 Araguaiti troops, and so it begins. The beginning of your revenge, Gallas. It would have been better for you to join us than setting off on this pointless journey that resulted in the sorceress's death. Your people would have been safe under Uriah's protection. You cannot conceal your bloodlust from me, Gallas. But there are better ways to satiate this desire. If you come to me, if you bring the Lady of Light to me, your eye might yet give your people a chance. Galas, you know where to find me. I eagerly await your answer, Galas. Galas, is something the matter? You seem pale. No. No, not really. Carlos, if you feel weak or ill or need to rest, just remember that I am here to help you. Dogs, I don't like the dogs. Don't like the shack style either. Look out. They brought numbers of some sort of metallic war beast with them. What in the world are those things? Wait, could it be those creatures Lord Torankin mentioned? Indeed, shark stars as the enemy calls them. The name supposedly means invincibles in some dead language. Rumour has it that all settlements upon which they are unleashed fall in a matter of hours, leaving, leaving no survivors. Thus their existence remains one of the best guarded secrets of the Chaos Empire. Okay, the birds fly randomly around. Lots of birds over here. At least I hope the Chaos troops are going to attack them. Now who have we got on the Chaos side? Do we have any level 2 troops here? Alright, so it looks like the troops on this side of the map are all level 1, apart from a couple of Knights of Chaos. On this side of the map, we, again we've got a few level 2 units. We've got a Zephyr and we've got a, a Grunt. Over here we've just got level 1 units for the time being. So I guess Ben is going to be the opponent to look out for, and I'm going to have to try and protect my allies' troops if I want to survive this. What I can do straight away is go grab this village, because there's not much that this one headhunter can do to stop me. Now at this point is is quite tricky, because there's a few strategies I could take. Um, I think the smartest strategy, because there's a quite a lot of forest over here, um, is probably to team up with the orcs, take down the purple leader with my elvish troops, because the elvish troops um, they are tough and they're good. They're, they've got extremely good defense in forests. Um, meanwhile, my chaos, my undead troops, can come over here, um, and they can deal with these headhunters and um, demons and get rid of the Grey Leader. And then once I've done that, we can see where we are and whether we've got enough forces to push forward and defeat Brown and Orange, or whether we have to try and sneak through. Uh, it's worth recalling we don't have huge amounts of time in this scenario. 
So any of these guys fast? Um, yeah, the horsemen are quite fast. They can get to that one, but none of my troops can. Um, so I'm just going to move forward with Erethan. And then everyone else can run into the woods or towards the woods. Including you. I've got to be careful with you, Berserk Man. Alright, so now, yeah, I can't anymore recruit any Elvish units at all. Everyone is either undead, Dark Adept, Vampire Bat, or Sprite. And they'll all have gone for my recall list as well. Rip. Okay, I don't actually have that many units left um, in my recall list, so I might as well just recall all of them, starting with the weaker ones so I don't exhaust my gold straight away. Alright, first up is this Blood Bat. I want to recruit, recall you on this side so that you can grab some of those villages. Dinner in the Dark Adept from the last scenario. And the um, the Fire Fairies, can you support down here? You're not going to be very useful on this side, I feel, against this type of enemy. So I'm going to have you over here too. Fanny the Sprite and Lethridae the Fire Fairy. And then I've got a bunch of undeads. Um, of, of, um, I've got how many other troops? Exactly six. Okay, so this is, these are the six undead troops that I will be recalling next time. In fact, all of these, other than Arari the Necromancer, um, in fact, yeah, every single one of them is from before the undead list was wiped. So I definitely want, don't want to lose these guys. They're just too good, especially Scythe the Spectre with his two after maximum level advancements. Um, that does mean that I can afford to get a few more units now. Um, and what I'm going to get um, what am I going to get um, what am I fighting on this flank alright I'm fighting demons which means that fireball is pretty good against all my undead troops but there aren't very many of them so hopefully the Aragwife allies can help with that um, and I'm fighting chaos invaders who my undead should be pretty good against um, and so, I think I want to go with skeleton type units and maybe a ghost or two. Just going to go for two ghosts for now. Okay. And we've got quite a nasty minus on our gold, but that was to be expected. All right. like purple is too, and purple's training shock styles and automata. I don't like that. <laughs> Those monsters are burning down the forest. Why would people do this in a world where all verdant land is more precious than gold? We shall make them pay dearly for this. Alright, so they trash the terrain around them. Interesting. Recruiting two castles full of troops. No sign that our enemies are running out of money at all. That's quite worrying, because I'm running out of money. Even though my units are very powerful. And my allies clearly are running out of money, especially the Araguay.
We've got more of you birds, please fly off the map. All you do is slow the turn down. Alright, we've got dogs over here. You just run back for now. It's daytime, I'm not going to be as good at clearing out these Araguites as you, these, not these Araguites, sorry, these, these demons and invaders as you are. It's going to be interesting remembering that I don't actually have to fight the, uh, <laughs> that, that I don't actually have to fight the Chaos troops, the, the, I don't have to fight the Orcs here, sorry. Oh god, my brain is absolutely fried. Alright, so, let's get in there. Elinia, you can already fight, and you can even heal the units around you next turn. Um, so, it's probably worth you taking a few hits in order for this to, to work out. Alright, one horseman down. And now a few of these units. Now these guys, ray blades, are very nasty. They're basically... Um, like those undead, what are they called? Um, uh, like those undead that have multiple attacks, but and they don't have very good. They're not very good defensively. They're, they've got the armored ability, which means that they've got bonuses to resistance, but they can't move as far. Um, but basically, they are a sort of glass cannon type unit that can just lay, lay the smack down really easily. Now, Malkashar, now that you're here, I actually want you to go somewhere else. Um, I want you to go over here um, and fight. Now, Orange is going to be a pain, because Orange is going to come up middle. Um, and, and so Orange's troops are the ones I'm going to have to face the most directly. Um, so maybe my best bet right now is to get Malkashar into a position where he's going to get attacked by this Zephyr, and the Zephyr's going to kill itself. That's what I'm hoping will happen down here. Unfortunately, the blue player might throw a monkey wrench in the works. We shall see. Okay, you stay a little bit behind so that you don't get berserk attacked and die. Um, you go into the woods and hide. You run up ahead and hide. Um, being blocked a bit here by, by my allies. Erethan, what are you going to do? I don't want you to go there, because you'll just get killed if you go there. Um, it's actually tempting to have you run back a bit, but that's not too useful either. Shame I can't get you into a better position, but I think for now, you're going to have to go over here. And you're going to have to go here. And then some fire fairies to back these guys up. And then everyone else is going to go this way. And that includes the bat. And these two ghosts. Uh, and they need to really wait till nightfall in order to be maximally effective. And this one Dark Adept is going to have to be very careful not to get himself killed. Okay, um, I've got just about enough money to recruit all of these remaining undead powerhouses. So I will do that, even Sir Slow, who is uh, going to be his usual slow self. But he's not going to be the only one who's going to be slow, because uh, Arari the Necromancer is also very slow. Okay, good thing I could get everyone in my re recall list. So there are now, there's now no one for me left to recall. I've got everyone. Um, this is it, I'm all in. Yalas, are you going to go with the elves, or are you going to go with the undead? Um, I kind of feel like... Well, the elven force is a little bit weaker, but then the Araguay ally is also a little bit weaker. Um, I mean, 56 hit points on a level 3 leader is really quite dismal, um, especially when there are dogs around. So... Unless you want to go straight down the middle, Galas, I think the answer is probably... hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm not going to send you right down the middle. 
gonna send you here so that you can redeploy if it looks like one flank is getting overwhelmed. Because I have a feeling actually that these orange troops are gonna head more in the direction of my elves than my undead. Okay, that's that. And I'm gonna be out of gold next turn. Now this is one of those moves that it obviously seems seems incredibly smart to the AI, but it really is dumb. The, the, the AI ally is just moving its troops straight forward one by one. I don't get what it thinks its strategy is here. Good poison the level 2 units. Not huge amounts of damage. Pointlessly attacking the Razor Bird. Good going. At least these green troops are going to be basically a meat shield for the purple ally to come out and uh, And they're burning down the forest around them, which is very bad for my elven units. And the leader coming out here, interestingly, and unfortunately, not taking any hits. It doesn't mean that Black isn't going to be able to recruit this turn. And these black units also might get crushed next turn, because there are a lot of blue units waiting to swoop down on them. Well, there's all sorts here. We've got dogs, uh, we've got imps, we've got shark style. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, fun for the whole family. And now brown is out of money. No, okay, so... You didn't come and attack Malkeshar after all, that's disappointing. I was hoping that that would be a suicide move of the kind that the AI likes. Orange is out of money. The birds are mostly gradually fucking off. And purple's out of money as well, that's a good sign. These falcons don't seem to want to attack anyone. Okay. What's the play? So anything that's forest won't be forest when these guys get close to it. I feel like I should be cautious here, and I should let the green player take the bulk of the damage. And then I should strike back when the purple player is a bit more exposed. So I'm going to try and get into a better position rather than doing a lot of damage this turn. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm going to bother trying to do damage this turn. Oh, you can try and get an easy kill against this razor bird. Easy kill, you say? Nope. <laughs> Not for Arathan. Nothing's an easy kill for Arathan. It's kind of embarrassing, you know, getting a a unit that's that's that weak as a as a unit that has to stay alive at this stage in the campaign. It's, it's so tempting to put you here and slow one of these more powerful units. Maybe I will. Um, I don't think you're going to immediately die. If I do that. Um, especially since green gets to, gets to strike first. The green will probably come in and, and give me a bit of a, a bulwark. Plus, if two units attack him, he's going to level up. 
so that's good. <laughs> keep keep wanting to attack my orcish ally. Don't attack your ally! Ah, oh, foolish, foolish person. Alright, you come round here. You over here. Everyone just basically press on in the way that you're already going. Green can take the brunt of it for now. Um, now in the center, you know, the center is a problem. And I feel like I should try and stem this front assault somehow. Um, it's not at all clear to me how best to do that, especially on the open field here. I think maybe that the answer is actually to hold back for a little bit with some of my undead units and just defend. Um, it's going to be night time soon, but not super soon. Yeah, alright. So you come out into the woods. You head straight down here. None of the orange units can reach you. Huh, I'm weary. I'm wary about doing this because if I do this, blue might not support me and I might end up losing Igor and that would be really annoying, especially since there are dogs around. If there weren't dogs around, I would feel much more confident. Um, but I actually think... I actually think it will be fine. There's only one dog. Everyone else is quite slow, so I'm going to come in here, try and take out this guy. Basically just backing up blue here, allowing blue to get a bit further forward. Um, and my bat actually can also help with that. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so blue now should be able to push forward against these other troops. And that's a much more useful use of blue than anything else I can think of. Ghosts, advance, dark adept. Um... Still kind of, still kind of hopeful. I can, I can coax this guy out um, and have him attack some of my troops. Maybe if Malkashar goes up here to this windmill, so then he can only be attacked by the Zephyr. And you stop in the woods just to make you a, sh a little bit safer. Um, who knows who will be able to attack you next turn. You might die, especially if a dog gets in there. And the rest of these undead are going to go straight for the black leader, basically, because I don't think anything down here can withstand three spectres. Certainly not a level three imp. Okay, anyone else need to move? Well, Galas could probably move. Galas can and probably should move. Um, just going to stand him here so that if these units come in... Ah, don't really want that invoker to get in range of Sir Slow. Especially not with the Zephyr able to as well. That's going to be their move, I think. They're, they're going to be tempted to come in and attack Sir Slow because he's not super defensive here and he's got... And he's weak to fire damage. Um, but they shouldn't kill him, not in one hit anyway. So I should be able to mount a counter-offensive. This is such a disgrace! Why am I even allowing this elf to command me like a minion, when I should be the one ordering his corpse around? Helenia, help me. You have the power to put an end to my suffering. Normally, I would be happy to oblige, but as it turns out, Galas is quite fond of you, for reasons I can't even begin to understand. 
He would not be pleased if he found out I turned his necromancer friend into a steaming pile of earth. Ah, you sound so sure of yourself. Hear me then. Someday this kid will bite the dust and I will be free to do as I wish. Then we shall duel to the death and show the world that not even the Lady of Light can banish Mal Kashar the Eternal from Erdia. Just you wait. All right, no more dogs. No more, whatever that was. And no, don't attack the razor bird. Oh, come on, man. Oh, please. It's not as if Anlinde casts some sort of curse on you but compels you to obey and follow Galas as long as he lives, right? Right. No! Such a waste of Green's units. Well, so much for the invincible part. But what is this? I've managed to remove one of its armor plates and there is living flesh inside. Although it smells much like a rotting corpse. So it is a living creature after all. But it seems completely unlike anything I've ever seen. What kind of foul sorcery is this? I haven't the slightest idea. Nobody from our country has ever seen one of those abominations in the flesh. It's very likely that they specifically created them to serve as the Empire's living weapons. I shudder to think there might be thousands of them en route to our lands. I simply cannot begin to fathom the sort of twisted mind that would create a new form of life for the express purpose of slaughtering whole civilizations. These are slaves. Mmm. Their flesh begins to disintegrate once you breach their metallic exteriors. And it seems they don't even have a skeleton inside, much like insects. Ah, what a waste of time. I can't work with this. I would not let you anyway. Oh, Alinea, you truly are the life of the party. Okay, yeah, so good. Green is pressing forward against purple, and hopefully purple's going to put most of its troops in the difficult positions now. Assassins. Lovely. Okay, that's not too bad. No, no one's defending poor old... Blue is actually proving somewhat useful over here, but Blue's units are not going to last that long, especially with Brown coming in from behind like this. Still, next turn, Blue ought to be able to do some damage over here. Think it's the daytime. Stop burning the windmills down. That's renewable energy right there. K 
Chaos Empire in the pay of Big Cole. Okay, so start on this flank, and I think this is the area where I'm most able to just kind of clear up a bit. I want to get this ray blade out of the way. Uh, you, Erethan, you're too slow. Someone else will have to get the kill. Alright, the leader's been slowed. Ah, it's a shame that these green units are blocking this uh, fire fairy, because she's got a nice path there. She could get a really nice kill against this guy and head towards another level. But twas not to be, so instead, I think Detea in the forest here is just going to have to go up a level um, and get the kill. Is there anything more useful you could be doing? I mean, these orcs are going to have a real hard time killing the, the automata, and to be honest, most of the rest of my elves are too. I think, no, it is, hmm, huh. oh, I'm so torn. Um, no, this guy, I mean, this guy's so dead when he gets attacked by weak orcs that it seems like a better use of the weak orcs than, than it is a good use of, of my abilities here. Okay, this guy's on one health as well, and he's slowed. Okay, hopefully both of those two will get themselves killed this turn, and then I won't have much to worry about on this flank. Um, and the rest of my elves are just going to basically wend their way around. You guys come down. You're not very tough, but you can help defend against the remaining purple troops. Um, Orange can't really join this fight, at least not with anyone particularly useful. Well, this, this grunt's a bit of a pain, but uh, I can easily take out Orange. And very few of these units can get back in time to help out their, their boss man. In fact, only this one automaton and this Chaos Raider. Otherwise, the boss is on his own and Alinea has got him, basically. And so these other units, I mean, when Revelia gets there, it's over. Now, the more tricky fight is this one up here. Um, orange troops, they're still not actually plowing into me. Um, it's still the daytime. I could come out and do damage, but I would get hit quite badly in return. So it's not clear what the best strategy is. Um, especially for you. You actually... Um, yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Um, tempting now for Malkeshar to just come out and, and start obliterating things. Um, no one is hugely powerful here other than the demons. Um, no one here is all that great against spectres. Um, so it might be that actually my best bet, rather than trying to sneak past with these spectres, is to try and take the fight. But I, the reason I'm, I'm reluctant to do that is because of these invokers here. They can do massive damage to spectres if they, uh, if they get their day. Um, and without, those, without these blue units, yeah, probably only a matter of time before they get in there. So, so back off then, for now, leave blue to deal with the bulk of the damage. Take this village from blue, I think, 
Um, no, is that wise? Um, I'll be in range of this this mage either way. Ghosts during the day, um, not hugely useful. I would like to be able to take out this demon on the house because I have a feeling that Blue would will like to will, will aim to double back and and kill that. Now you you better stay away from the dog because if you get hit by the dog, you're dead meat. I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> you're not actually, you're not any use at all, really. Um, but go and stand in the forest over here. Are you free from the dog? Only just, but yeah. You're not free from everyone. A few of you can reach back round, so if Igor jumps down here, um, and tries to get an assassination in, it's not going to end well, especially since there are still brown troops coming up here. Um... I feel like the dog probably won't last long, so... and these guys don't have a huge amount of choice in the matter. So I'm going to stick Malkeshar in a rather dangerous position over here and see what, what happens to him. You can do half the damage and get poison, or... yeah, alright. But these blue troops are going to get so completely mopped up over here that... that I actually don't feel confident in keeping him out here. So he's going to run away to this house, and the bat's going to run away as well. Over here... I think I want Sir Slow on the house. I want Galas behind him, and the Necromancer behind him, and I might need to come back and do some support. Well, no more dog. Now the blue troop knows, the blue army knows where the, uh, knows where the nasty enemies are. But blue is... Hilariously out of position. Good. Green, green, green assassins did exactly what I wanted, and now hopefully they can die with honor. All of which, of course, hit. Yeah, that was a bit jammy. Not too jammy, but a bit jammy. Stop it! That's more like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm very glad I didn't leave Igor over here. How dare you attack Malkeshar. What was that? 
I've never seen anything like it before. Okay, Brown's flood of troops is beginning to wane. Now Orange, predictably, is going to go for the nearest enemies rather than rushing past. And its powerful units are in the center. And not doing very well, actually. Ah, oh, survive! Yes! Alright. So blue's not quite a spent force. And orange is splitting its troops very much. Fire fairies. Lovely. Alright. So the right flank's not looking great. Um, but the left flank is really looking very promising. So first things first, I want to see if I can basically mop up. Now that bird, <laughs> this bird is really, that, that's a very, very annoyingly placed bird because that bird can, uh, can block my good troops from getting in there and getting attacks. And at the moment I need as many troops as possible in here. I think I can get at least five people in there to attack. Now I want the kill, so I'm not going to poison this guy. I almost always want the kill, that's the problem. Okay, good. You three can get in on that side, so that means that Elinia, you come down here and just fairy fire the shit out of this man. And he is almost dead. Um, so I'm gonna let Felor get the kill. Yuck Nagoth shall feast on your souls someday, you unworthy fools. Someday. Someday. How about we make sure to cut their windpipes open from now on, so they cannot give these irritating cookie-cutter dying speeches? Alright, one enemy leader is down. So now this flank, the main task now is to mop up the remaining purple troops and to make sure I don't get killed by orange. Orange has got a lot of wizardy units here, um, that's okay if they're over here, they're not going to be so effective here, they, they're better against undead. Um, I'm more worried about them on this flank. But here, on the other hand, Blue has got some troops still who are actually quite useful. So, Erethan unsurprisingly can't do anything useful. Funny the Sprite could come out and get a kill here and level up, but then be in some danger. Yeah. Okay, you've got 44 hit points now. You shouldn't be super weak. Um, now, I want, actually, everyone over here should really back off a bit. Galas, I actually want you to come around here and kill this guy. Okay, no kill, but still not too bad. Um, Revelia, you can only get in on this guy. Um, now here the question is just whether the smart move is to run in with everyone I've got and hope for the best, especially since these guys don't do too much damage actually against... It doesn't seem possible to use the explosive arrow, that's weird. Um, oh well, you just do your thing. I'm just going to try and kill everything, I think. Oh, 
Well, that's not a great start when it comes to killing everything. Uh, Lethrade, the Fire Fairy. Now, fire is good against Shark Style, that is one thing that you can say for sure. Unfortunately, you do have to hit, but this is such a beautiful opportunity. Look at this. This is such a beautiful opportunity for this one hit point assassin to get a kill and level up. Leave green some opportunities to get in, and so I think my best bet is to come around here. Oh no! That was feeble. Okay. Now, Detea is in a bit of trouble. You guys just head into the hills. You'll probably get attacked this turn, but that's okay. And Orange is... Orange's wizards can't really do anything much now. So now I need to worry more about this flank, and I think the best way of dealing with this flank is to just keep on pushing towards the, s towards the south. Uh, get, get rid of Black's troops first. We can't get rid of all of them. Come on, a couple of big hits. No hits. How about no hits? Alright. Not a fan of all these demons around. They can really chew up my powerful undead troops. I'm gonna have to try and clear them out. Finally. Who can reach me down here? No one much. Alright, get into that get onto that mountain and get the kill. If you can. One hit, come on! There we go. Alright, now the ghost can finish it. Good job. Shah is actually in a bit of bother here. If Blue doesn't step up to the plate and uh, do some nice rescuing, um, I could be I could be in the shit. Just hope that he's got what it takes to survive, even though there is a wizard type unit that can get in on him and some demonesses. Well, he's tough. He's got a lot of health, so I reckon he can do it. Blue taking care of some of the most immediate threats. And you, thank you. You've just stood in front of Malkashar. Oh, why didn't you do that with... Why? What? That was such a stupid move. Oh, yes. But green now. Green is in their element. Haha, -ha, yes. Purple 
Apple is effectively out of the game. Now. No, no, no! Ah, oh, well. He was never gonna last. Okay, Brown can come in and mop up most of Blue's remaining troops. Whatever these guys are, they can't hit to save their lives. And I mean that quite literally. The Orc player here is doing a lot better. Oh no! This is looking very bad for Sir Slow. I'm not sure I can save Sir Slow. He's surrounded by four orange units. I've not got that many units that can actually get in range. And even if I do, hmm. I'll probably lose someone else. Okay, you can run up there, and that would not put you out of range of all of the enemy. What about if you run back here? That's more likely to save your life. I think there's going to be a lot of um, of pressure on Detea, and you know this is someone who's had an after maximum level advancement, so it would be a shame if they died. But equally, they've got a 70 70 percent defense rate in hills, so pretty good. Okay, you just run. There's no one who's got skirmish around here, so no one ought to be able to kill you. Unless they go through these guys. And now I need to basically wipe up the units that belong to purple, and then I can move in on orange. Not very wipey, linear, not wipey at all. Oh, now, maybe now. Oh, still, you see. What's with this explosive arrow ability? It doesn't seem to do anything. I don't even have the option of using it. It ought to be perfect in this situation, because it would go straight through this guy and kill the guy behind as well. But it is not to be. Should I be using someone weaker to attack this? Not you. You've just been too slow the whole time. As as to be honest of you, Erethan. I don't like all of these invokers. There are too many of them. And I'm not going to put... It's so tempting to put Galas there. But if I do, then Galas is going to get attacked by basically everyone in the known universe. Can I maybe... I uh, can pretty much rely on green to take out the rest of these folks for me, but...
So many orange units. I think I'm going to lose someone. If I put you there, then you're not in a great position. And you don't manage to do much damage, do you? You guys are lawful, so you're actually pretty rubbish at this time of night. How much damage would you do here? Again, not hugely much. If you go there, you're going to get zapped out of existence. It's a shame because I want you there to do the healing, but you can't take you can't tank three invokers, four invokers plus a bunch of demons. That's just far, far too much zappy zap. Maybe Gallus wants to come down here. I can't quite I can't get the angles I want. That's my problem down here. Still can't get the angles, so I guess you come up here. What will happen is that green will go, now that um, purple is essentially out of the game. Green is now going to go and attack um, attack orange um, with full force, and that might actually be my saving grace on this flank. I'm going to put you here because I feel like I'm going to get attacked down here and I want some defences. Galas, I'm just going to move you up here and and you can just you can just defend Sir Slow. Or is that worse? Um, no, I don't, I don't think any of the enemy units can come up around here. If, or if they can, they can't come far enough. So I want you there, I think. You can't reach anyone, you won't be able to reach anyone, you won't be able to reach anyone. So it's just these eight orange units. Now down here, I've got my spectres in a beautiful position to finish off black completely. Can't quite get anyone else in there, but um, given that it's night time, I'm hoping that my spectres can do it alone. And there's only weak imps to defend, sorry, strong imps. This guy's strong, he's also dim. Um, yeah, okay. Gut-wrencher gut imps are annoyingly good in defense. Still, I feel like ultimately you won't survive three spectres. Even if you can hold off for a short while. The trouble with using Igor for this is that Igor can be drained. And actually I might need Igor in order to keep Malkeshar alive up here. Because there are a lot of enemy units that are out for his blood. I'm going to use this ghost to run interference and to kill this demoness hopefully. Or just to miss three times. Hopefully Blue will now use this unit to get rid of that Demoness. I'm gonna put Mal I'm gonna put you on this house. Um, and I'm gonna put Malkesh shot. I'm gonna bring you down here so that you can take a house next turn. I'm going to put Malkeshar on this house, 
So he doesn't do any damage, but he's probably going to attract quite a lot of fire. Um, and as for you, Igor, I might run you away to this furthest house. So you can hardly be attacked. Or I could run you down to... I could run you down to that bottom house, and there you won't get attacked either. I think that's probably the safest bet. There you go. And you're taking money off, off black now. All right, this is not going to be the best of turns for me. I'm going to lose someone, at least, um, apart from this ghost, who I'm obviously going to lose. So let's see who it is. I just hope it's not Markeshar. Good job. I do not understand why Blue didn't use that guy more effectively. Like, Green could have got that kill there. Go goblins! Now, orange is best options here. I mean, black is... Black is effectively an irrelevance. Um, orange's best options are... Uh, rip the last of blue's troops, I think that was, is down, and there goes my ghost too. Well, Keshar's having a bad day. Still... Leave nothing standing! Burn the heathens alive! They are burning the villages of our people! This atrocity will not go unpunished! Don't bother taking prisoners! Just crush them all! I forgot they did that. Okay, <laughs> they're all teaming up. <laughs> they're all teaming up to fight Malkashar, that's quite funny. And as I hoped, Orange is in the first instance going for the green troops. Shame. Okay, now just like blue. Oh, hoo. well, that's not great. Okay, so um, I am gonna start off, I think, by trying to take out this gut wrencher imp, and I'm gonna do so with Milongil the Lich. Two hits out of three will do it. Oh, such a shameful death. Oh, I beg your mercy, your liar. Okay, first attack of the turn, and the second leader goes down. Two of four leaders remain standing. There are still quite a lot of forces in play. The battlefield is by no means under my control. I'm losing money. Can I pull this off? Can I pull this back? We shall see, and we shall see in part two of this video.